What's going on guys? Big Jar back again with Warp Academy. And today, I want to talk about the ERA4 bundle by Accusonis. It's also known as the Audio Repair Bundle. Where we can take audio that sounds like this and quickly and easily make it sound like this. All right, let's get into it. Accusonis' Audio Repair, or ERA bundle, is a collection of single knob audio cleanup plugins. These are the perfect tools for you if you're doing a podcast, a vlog, or recording vocals of any kind. The one knob layout is crazy simple and improves the quality of your audio super fast. In the standard bundle, you'll get a noise remover, a reverb remover, a voice leveler, a de-esser, a plosive remover, and a declipper. And if you decide to go for the pro version, you'll get all that plus a de-esser pro and the ERA-D. These are not only a bunch of really great plugins, but just as important, they are easy to use and highly effective. In fact, I'm using them on the audio you're hearing right now. After seeing what these plugins can do, I'm sure you're going to want to add them to your library. And if you do, you could check out more information and even grab them at the Warp Academy software store. There's a link below that'll take you right there. We're gonna take a look at each individually with audio examples. Let's get into the first one now, noise remover. So the interface couldn't be easier to use. There's only one knob. All we have to do is turn that up and that will remove more of the noise. Now it does come at a bit of a cost, as you'll see in a second. The more you turn it up, the more it gets a little bit of a watery sound, but at the end of the day, it does sound way better than the harsh noise. Real quick before we get into the example, down at the bottom, we've got our EQ specific points. The first one will process all of the frequencies evenly. The second one, it will only focus on the high frequencies. Third one here, only focus on the low frequencies. This one will do high and low frequencies, and this one will focus on the mid frequencies. Now this is going to be the tonal and buzz kill static noise button. They do warn in the manual that this button may add some artifacts depending on the case, so they advise only to use it when it's needed. Over to the right is the A-B switch. This will just show you two different setups in case you're wondering which one sounds better, you can compare. And the output volume knob will simply control your output volume. And then at the top, we've got got our zoom. I've actually got it zoomed into 200% so we can see everything nice and clear. So now that we know how it works, let's check it out. In this audio example, I left my air conditioner up on medium while I was recording this dialogue. Let's check it out and hear how it sounds with the air conditioner. Noise happens, but you don't have to settle. Use ERA noise remover to easily reduce or completely remove unwanted fans, air conditioners, electrical hum, or hiss. All right, amazing. Now, let's go ahead and turn this up and see what happens. Noise happens, but you don't have to settle. Use ERA noise remover to easily reduce or completely remove unwanted fans, air conditioners, electrical hum, or hiss. Now that actually worked pretty good, but you could probably hear what I was saying about that watery effect at the top. I guess everything comes at a cost, right? So obviously I totally pushed this to the limits, leaving my air conditioner on medium, which is the middle setting anyway, so it's pretty loud. So if this was a little more not as intrusive, it might have worked even better. In fact, like I mentioned earlier, I am using this on the mic that you're hearing right now, which was recorded still in a not perfect environment, but I did turn the air conditioner off and it works perfectly. By the way, one of the really cool things I like about the ERA bundle is that they offer you these audio files that you could practice on. So they give you things that are kind of messed up and you can go ahead and use the tools here to see how to fix them so you get comfortable with using them. You could download those as well as a trial right from their site. In fact, let's use one of their files in our next example with the reverb remover. Reverb is an unavoidable result of room acoustics. It can make your audio sound distant, echoey, or hollow. We're gonna to listen to the example that Accusonis gave us and hear the reverb in the background. Then we're gonna use reverb remover to remove that reverb and give us a cleaner sound. First, let's take a look at the GUI. All of the standard bundle plugins are very, very similar. The only difference in this particular plugin is the auto makeup gain button right here, which I would probably leave on. Let's check out the file they gave us to work on. Eventually, no system could keep pace with the decimal or Arabic number system, which has 10 numerals. 
All right, we could definitely hear that reverb. And if we want to fit this into any type of a mix or situation, we're going to need to remove that. So let's see what reverb remover can do for us. Eventually, no system could keep pace with the decimal or Arabic number system, which has 10 numerals. Not bad at all. I like it. And the auto makeup gain button allowed us to reduce the reverb, but still maintain our volume. Next up, let's check out Voice Leveler. Voice Leveler automatically balances the level of your audio. Voice Leveler allows your audio to have a consistent level throughout the recording, especially on speech and dialogue. In a familiar fashion, this GUI looks very similar to the other ones, with a few additions. First off, we have our first processing knob. This is the main control of Voice Leveler, and they say that most times you don't have to do anything else, just dial in the amount that you want. However, there are some processing modes down below. We've got normal and tight. So normal will allow a more natural processing, while tight will give you a more pronounced processing signal. Right next to that, we've got our emphasis toggle button. Enable emphasis to apply smooth tonal balance on process signals. This setting will automatically add extra presence and liveliness to the sound, but only if it detects it's needed. And to the far right, we've got our breath control. Now this doesn't remove breaths. What this does is it takes the breaths that may be in between the words, and it will focus on not making them loud because voice leveler is going to be increasing and decreasing volumes of our actual words, but the breath control will keep the breaths at an even level, not remove them. Still, this will help in this situation. And on the bottom, we're gonna notice as we run our signal through that we will have a waveform view. Here we can see what we're doing to our actual signal. You'll notice when I play the example in a second, there will be black and yellow audio. The black represents what the audio was originally. The yellow will represent what the processing is doing. So I made this example, guys, and I put all of the errors in. I made certain parts louder, certain parts quieter, and I put a deliberate breath in. All right, let's check out what it sounds like with no processing. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck? if a woodchuck could chuck wood. All right, we could totally hear all those inconsistencies and obviously the breath. So the first thing that they say is if you want voice leveler to work at its max, then you should put noise remover first. So let's go ahead and do that. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? All right, perfect. We could absolutely hear that sounding a lot more dead, meaning that I've removed any type of noise with my microphone, which obviously wasn't nearly as drastic as our first example. All right, now that the noise has been removed, let's go ahead and see about voice leveler. So I am gonna leave it in normal mode, but I am gonna go ahead and turn on emphasis and breath control because I wanna see how they work. All right, let's go ahead and play the clip again and turn up the processing until we have an even dialogue. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck? If a woodchuck could chuck wood, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? It's sounding pretty good to me right here, but let's go ahead and exaggerate it. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? It absolutely sounds a lot more even to me. And I noticed that the breath control did a great job at not raising the volume of my breath. Overall, I think the voice leveler worked really good. As you can see, I really messed up the levels here. I really raised some and really lowered some. So again, this is an extreme example and I'd say the voice leveler worked really well on it. Next up, let's check out D Clipper. But just before we get going, I'd like to invite you to join the community by hitting the subscribe and activate notifications. That way you won't miss a beat and you'll get the heads up on all the things as soon as we post them. D-Clipper automatically detects and restores any clip part of your audio without compromising the audio quality. Again, the GUI looks very similar to all the other ones, but in this case, we have a bit of a difference. So the main control area is actually simply a toggle button, not a knob, which enables and disables the processing of this plugin. There are actually two types of processing that we could choose between, type one and type two. Type one is the default and it's enough to detect and repair most clipped audio. But for trickier cases, 
cases, you might need to use Type 2. And then down at the bottom, you'll notice that there's two quality modes, standard and high. In most cases, standard quality is enough to get great results. High quality could improve them even more when there's especially demanding cases, but it comes at the cost of more processing power. In this particular plugin, there's an output protection indicator. Due to the nature of audio clipping, the repaired signal may exceed the amplitude limit. This would make it sound like it's clipping again. But don't worry, because this is where the output protection indicator comes in. Once you see that guy light up, all you need to do is turn down your output gain slider. I'll be showing you exactly what I mean in just a moment when we go through our example. That's basically it for declipper. In this one, I wanted to dive back into the Accusanus files and use that for our declipping practice. Please remember to pat the dough out starting in the center and slowly press it out to the edge of the pan. All right, that's definitely clipping, right? So let's see what this plugin can do for us. Please remember to pat the dough out starting in the center and slowly press it out to the edge of the pan. That really worked well. Let me play that one more time and let me point out the clipping indicator. Up top, you'll notice where declipper starts to sense declipping and then down on the word output when it turns red, this is the clipping indicator letting us know that we're going over our limit. So we could just turn that down till the red doesn't light up anymore. So let's do that. Please remember to pat the dough out starting in the center and slowly press it out to the edge of the pan. Much better. Next up, let's jump into the plosive remover. Plosive Remover offers precision grade removal of plosive sounds caused by mechanical impact of fast moving air, most commonly heard with P's. Usually when doing vocals or dialogue, we should be using some type of a pop filter, but every once in a while they sneak through. So we got this to fix it. There's no surprises here with the interface. Basically, we're really used to that at this point. The processing knob in the middle will go ahead and remove those plosives. The more you turn it up, the more it will work. In most situations, all you have to do is turn up that processing knob. Like a few of the other plugins, at the bottom we have two processing modes, normal and extreme. In most cases, normal is all you're gonna need, but if you find yourself in a really extreme situation, you could try the extreme mode. Much like the declipper, in the top right, we have a processing indicator. This acts as a visual cue to let you know when plosive remover is working. And down at the bottom, you'll see a real-time processing display when we start playing some audio. The black is the incoming signal or the original audio, and the orange is the output signal showing when plosives are detected. If you find this process tricky, there is a diff button, D-I-F-F, -F, and when this is enabled, you'll hear what plosive remover is removing. Everything else is the exact same, so let's go ahead and get into this audio example I made. Hey Paul, can you please pass the potatoes? All right, we could absolutely hear those peas. They're really big and they're really pronounced. We can actually see them too. They're very obvious. Let's see how a plosive remover can help us out. As usual, we'll turn up that processing knob and see what happens. Hey Paul, can you please pass the potatoes? All right, at about 38%, we got rid of the back two, but that first one is definitely still noticeable. Let's turn it up a bit more. Hey Paul, can you please pass the potatoes? Not bad, we're definitely getting better. Let's go ahead and turn it all the way up. Hey Paul, can you please pass the potatoes? Boom, there it is. We totally got rid of all the plosives. Let's go ahead and turn that DIFF button on and listen to what's actually being removed. While we're doing that, let's also take a look at the visual display at the bottom and the plosive indicator in the top right. We're getting rid of all that garbage and you could see it working. Next up, let's jump into the DSer and the DSer Pro. DSer and DSer Pro are gonna both do about the same thing. DSer Pro will obviously have more features. Both of these plugins work to get rid of sibilants, and those are usually hard S's that might come through on a singer or speech. Also a pro tip is if you're making bass music with very high pitched screechy bass sounds, you could use a DSer to tame them, as well as cymbals and hi-hats. The DSer from the standard bundle looks just like all the other standard plugins with our big processing knob in the middle. In addition to that, we have processing modes, narrow, normal, and broad. And there's also a second button named intense. When enabled, it will increase the processing intensity and works independently of the other three modes. 
Staying true to the design, the de-esser also has a processing indicator in the top right, letting you know when it senses sibilance, as well as the real-time display at the bottom where you can see in real-time the de-esser working to fix sibilance. And in the bottom right, we have the DIFF button, which allows us to listen to the S's that we are planning to remove. The DSR Pro isn't much different. It just gives us more control. We still have our main processing knob right in the middle, but in the Pro Edition, we actually have a focus parameter in the bottom left. This allows us to specify where we want the DSR Pro to look for sibilance, ranging between 1K and 8K. On the other side of the processing knob, we have a shaping slider going from soft to sharp. In a vocal situation where there's extreme harshness, sharp would be your best option. However, on the other hand, if you're using this on instruments such as basses or drums maybe, the cymbals, you might want to use gentle so it becomes a little more transparent. In the DS or Pro, over on the output knob, you can actually see a gain reduction meter. You'll see this as we run some audio through it and I'll call your attention to it, but we can see how much we're DSing it. Another one of the cool Pro features is a preset menu. Already loaded with presets to fix common problems. And both plugins do have a real-time processing display, but this one is a lot bigger and right there in the center. And just like the standard edition, this has the same DIFF button to let you know exactly what you're removing so you don't overdo it. Let's check out this example I made where I definitely exaggerated some S's and see how the DSer and DSer Pro can help us. Sally sells seashells by the shore. Definitely some harsh S's there. Let's see what we could do about it. Sally sells seashells by the shore. All right, not bad at all. Let's hit intense and see what that does. Sally sells seashells by the shore. All right, I'm really feeling it. Let's hit that DIFF button and see exactly what we're removing. Perfect, so we can see that we are only removing the S's and not any parts of our words. Let's go check out the DSer Pro and see how that guy works. So since I'm a male, I will put male speech on. Also, let's notice the gain reduction by the output. Sally sells seashells by the shore. To me, this sounds a lot cleaner. All right, they both work really great, but I would have to say that the DSer Pro gives us a little bit of a cleaner result. Just make sure you're using that DIFF button so you don't give yourself a noticeable lisp. All right, the last one we're gonna look at is in the Pro Bundle, the E-R-A-D. Let's get into it. ERAD is a very advanced and in-depth module. This is probably the reason you would go for Pro if you wanted to do that. In practice, all audio recordings feature both noise and reverb in varying degrees, interacting in a complex way. With ERAD, the goal is to tackle both noise and reverb in a single interface and in an adaptive mode, meaning there's no need for noise profiling. It just knows what to remove. As I mentioned, this is a very in-depth plugin. Now, there's no way I can go through all of these features in this video. The video is already very long, and to be honest, I could probably do a whole video just on this plugin. So what I'm gonna do is take some of those examples from before and go through some of the presets and just let you guys hear how this sounds. It does actually sound really good. So we remember that first noise remover example I had with the air conditioner. Let's check that out real fast. Noise happens, but you don't have to settle. Okay, just as a reminder. So I'm gonna go into the preset here and I'm gonna go to denoise and I'm gonna go to extreme denoising. All right, let's see how this guy works. Noise happens, but you don't have to settle. All right, let's adjust it a bit. Noise happens, but you don't have to settle. Use ERA noise remover to easily reduce or completely remove unwanted fans, air conditioners, electrical hum, or hiss. That's amazing. That works so much better than the other one. So again, I just wanted to do a small taste show and tell on this guy because it is super in depth. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for what I wanted to show you here with the ERA4 bundle. I hope you guys liked it and found it interesting. If you guys want to know more about this, head on over to the Warp Academy site where we got plenty of information, all right? See you guys later.